All right, here's the moment. Going in with Joe. It's game time. Hey smart people, Joe here. You probably know that I'm a scientist. And maybe you know that I'm also a dad. And you can probably guess that I am a fan of all things nerdy. These are things that define a big part of my identity. But what you might not know is that I'm a huge fan of University of Texas Longhorn sports, especially football. Or as we put it around here, I bleed burn orange. So when my team wins, I'm pumped. I'm super happy. I share a feeling of joy with thousands of people that I've never met. But when they lose, I feel sad, angry, a whole list of negative emotions. I, I take it very personally, even though I'm just a fan and I have no control over anything that happens on the field. You probably know someone like this, or maybe you are someone like this. Humans can develop intense relationships, even obsessions with the things that we love and admire. A huge part of our identities, our emotions, and our lives get tied up in these things that we're fans of. Now remember, I am a huge nerd, so I wanna know why am I like this? Why am I, a scientist who tries to live my life according to logic and reason, so irrationally attached to a football team? I think the answers to these questions can teach us a lot about why humans are the way we are. So I decided to study this in the best laboratory possible, the real world. One of the biggest games of the college football season featuring my Texas Longhorns versus longtime powerhouse, the Alabama Crimson Tide on their home turf. And I was able to find a local Alabama boy and Crimson Tide super fan to join me. The fact that I'm taking you into the stadium mm -hmm. is an act of extreme devotion to our friendship. Like this could be the end of our friendship. What's about to happen with this game and all. Oh, gross! Your shirt. Oh, you it's not up. as bad as Tennessee orange, but it's 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 not great. <laughs> <laughs> How big a fan of Alabama are you? Big one. When Alabama went to the top ten in our basketball team, I was holding a, a sign. That it went out on the AP. It was a picture of me holding the sign that says Alabama number one. So you went nationally famous for being an Alabama fan. Yeah, that happened. Well, nobody's perfect. What does it mean to be a fan? Well, a fan is a person that has a strong psychological connection with something or somebody. You can be a fan of a pop star or a movie franchise, and of course, you can be a fan of sports teams. Most of us are fans of something, but have you ever actually asked yourself why you like the things you do? Like most things about being human, not all of us experience being a fan in the same way. Some of us are casual fans but others have really strong psychological connections to what we're fans of. It shapes our behavior, and even how we think about ourselves. These people, they're the super fans. My first words were Roll Tide. Okay. So psychologists have actually come up with a way to figure out how much of a fan a person is. They use a test developed by a psychologist named Dan Wan called the Sport Spectator Identification Scale. The SSIS is a short seven question quiz that asks a person to think about how their fandom affects how they see themselves, how they behave, and how others perceive them. The higher your score, the more you identify with your team, and the closer you are to being a scientifically certified sports superfan. So before the game, I gave this survey to as many superfans as I could find. This is far from a scientifically controlled experiment, but I think it'll give us an idea of just how big a part of our identities our fandom can be. And after we observe all the ways different people experience super fandom, then we're gonna take what we learned and try to crack the code on the psychology that makes this all tick. Uh, all right, I wanna ask you some questions. Okay. I was honest answers, okay? I want okay. you to give me a ranking from one to five. Oh, goodness, okay. One is not at all. Five is very much extremely Okay. Okay. How important is it to you that the Crimson Tide win? So, it's weird because Alabama is the best football team of all time. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, debatable fact. We're kind of used to winning, and that's bad. I don't know. So, I would say three. 
Because at some point, you win so much that you can tell that the fan base gets used to it, and it's bad for your soul. Okay. And so, I think, I'd say three. All right, so you won't feel too bad when you lose today, then. <laughs> oh, it's five. It's my entire personality. It's got to be. How important is it to you that the Longhorns win? Oh, yeah. Five. Five is high, right? Yeah. Okay, five. Absolutely. Six, maybe. How important is it to you that the Crimson Tide win every week? Oh, five. hundred percent. Yeah. What happens if they lose? What ha- with your emotions? Oh, That's gosh. Uh, it's it's pretty bad. I remember when we lost to LSU, and it was an away game. Bro, all of us in the car, we just like listened to super sad music like on the way because we went to someone's like property to go watch it. During the season, how closely do you follow the Crimson Tide? N- not as closely as I, I wish. And I think that's just because of the season of life I'm in right now. There's just too much going on, and I can't pay attention as much as I want. I, I watch the games. I would say not as close as I should. So I'd say I follow it at a two. Yeah. You're spending too much time on your YouTube channel. I am. I am. Yep. And it's getting in the way of your football fandom. It, it is. It is. So during the season, how closely do you follow Crimson Tide? TV, message board? Oh, all Twitter. of it. So I try my best to keep up with everything. You know, I, I own the largest online message board community related to the University of Texas called Surly Horns. Yep. It turns out that super fans really, really, really get into wanting to donate, contribute, build up a community. How often do you display Crimson Tide or Alabama logo or paraphernalia at work, at home, at, at school? Quite often. I, I worked at uh, I worked at a place in Tennessee as an intern, and the last day I worked, I went around and I hid Alabama logos throughout the office in places where people would find them months later. You pick up the phone and it was on the receiver. Do you remember the old CDs or the DVD burnables? Mm-hmm. Like like the 15th one down, I'd put a logo right oh, there. Oh, man. Yeah. I always will wear something. I always have something on me, and it's usually my ring. I don't take my ring off. Even when I get married, I don't see myself getting rid of, like, wearing my University of Texas ring. Like, it's always a part of me. How strongly do your friends and your family see you as a fan of the Crimson Tide? Uh, it's interesting because in our little circle, like my aunt, for example, is a bigger fan than any of us combined. Outside of our immediate sphere, people view me as more of a Bama fan than I think I am. Roll tide till I die, let's be clear. <laughs> However, if we lose, I'm quick to make sure to, to compliment the other team on a good game. Well, you were raised right, as they say in these parts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what's your name, Madison? Madison. Okay, I'm Joe. Bob. It's nice to meet you, Joe. Sorry about the horn sound. I you, know, know, you know how it is. Like I said, it's I'm immune to it. It's all right. Hurt. It's got to be this way today. <laughs> what about your friends? How strongly do your friends see you as a Crimson Tide fan? Like, they're like, oh, no, no, she's... Yeah, I'd say five. I'd say five. <laughs> I also surround myself with, like, avid fans. How strongly do you see yourself as a Crimson Tide fan? My first words were Roll Tide. Okay. That's <laughs> My pretty, first that's, words were Roll Tide. I think that makes and out I, of I'm pretty five. sure I went to Bama because, I, because of football. We grew up in a family where college wasn't a huge deal. And so we identified with that university. We're like, oh, it's time to go to university. Bama. So brainwash is what you can say. Brainwash, perfect. (laughs) I live in Atlanta. And like my identity is wrapped around being a Texas fan. I'm not gonna lie. He grew like they're beard. not a lot. Listen, my color. my beard burnt orange. I was born to be a Longhorn fan. Even in any city in the country, it doesn't matter. So it's the slice is 100. percent Like there's no like little bit anywhere else. This is something that I'm very passionate about and really love to do. And it's not just a weekend thing for me. But I can't say I can't say that it's 100 or 80. You know percent. It's 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 60 60 percent yeah. How much do you dislike the Crimson Tide's rivals? <laughs> I would say Tennessee is the most difficult okay. to deal with. I kind of I sneaky like Auburn. I would say Tennessee and Florida, nah, <laughs> not a thing. How do you feel about Alabama's biggest rival? Let's say one of your kids brings home, wants to bring home somebody from Tennessee. Out of the question. <laughs> How about Auburn? Auburn? Out of the question. Georgia. I could deal with it. LSU? Out of the question. How much do you dislike the Oklahoma Sooners? I'm just sorry. Like, if, it, if you're from anywhere outside the state of Oklahoma and you support that school, we've got problems. How much do you dislike Alabama's rivals? Like Texas? Um, strongly. Strongly. Like I said, I grew up in an SEC family, so that Auburn rivalry um, and that Tennessee rivalry, because that's where I'm from, is very, very, very strong. So your kid one day wants to bring home an Auburn fan for dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, how much do you dislike the Oklahoma Sooners. Five. Uh, if, can we do ten? Yeah, ten. I mean, ten. Is it, what's the scale? 
One to five. But you can go one to five? All right, we'll go fifth. Yeah. <laughs> How important is being a fan of the Crimson Tide to you? It's if a that went deal. away, how big of a deal would that be? How could that go away? <laughs> how, that can't go away. That's I grew up here, and it was ordained <laughs> at, at my birth that I was going to be a Bama fan. And when you go to school in Alabama, you walk in and they're like, hey, my name's Joey, what's your name? Uh, Alabama or Auburn. <laughs> I just can't imagine a reality or you know, a parallel universe in which being a Bama fan is not an option. After talking to all these people, it became really clear that for them, being a sports fan isn't just about who wins and loses on the field. It's a big part of these people's identity. And that brings up a lot of big psychology questions. Like, what makes people become fans in the first place? Some of it has to do with where we live, how accessible the games are, even which colors we're more attracted to. But researchers have found one of the most influential factors in super fandom is our connection to other people. Some of the most influential people in our lives are our parents. So it's not surprising that so many of us become fans during our childhood. And that gives us amazing videos of kids having some really big feelings about their sports teams. Kids think in black and white. Their brains and emotions aren't fully developed. So every time our parents approve of something, we're learning that that thing is good and that we should like it and emulate it. So our parents' fandom shapes what we like and what we become fans of. That's Destin's story. But for a lot of us, it's a combination of factors that turn us into fans. Like for me, I was not born a UT fan. My parents didn't go there, they weren't fans. But there was a lot of social pressure for me to pick a Texas team when I went to school. And then when I started college at Texas, it changed again. Sports became a crucial part of social bonding and a way to connect with people who would become my friends. It even became a way for me to bond with my wife's family who definitely love the Longhorns. Now, I don't think about any of this higher level stuff when I'm cheering for my favorite team, but it's true. It's there. For me, becoming a UT fan felt like a choice, but humans are social animals and we're unconsciously shaped by the groups and cultures that we're a part of. Psychology tells us that becoming a fan might not be the conscious decision that we think it is. Well, I mean, as far as being a super fan, it's just tribalism. Everybody's tribalistic, right? I mean, we're tribalistic that way, right? I was having drinks with an Alabama guy today. I like that guy. He was wearing the wrong color shirt, I'd fight that guy. <laughs> you know? It's just tribalism. A famous biologist named Edward O. Wilson explains that wanting to belong to a group is part of what makes us human. We want to form groups for safety and comfort. He explains that having a tribe gives us meaning in a chaotic world. But this also means we're wired to defend our group or tribe from other people. Today, more and more people are finding social belonging in fandoms. Swifties, Star Wars fans, BTS ARMY, they're all scratching the same psychological itch to be part of a group, to belong. It's kind of weird to think that our biology dictates what we love more than we consciously do. But scientists have actually tested this. In the 70s, researchers split a group of male high school students into two groups, just depending on which artist they preferred. Then students were given points, which they could distribute to members of either group. The more points you got, the more cash you received at the end of the experiment. The catch, the more points you gave to members of your own group, the fewer points you had to distribute overall. The researchers found that the boys overwhelmingly favored their own group, even when that meant that everyone got less money. Experiments like this one show that humans will form groups almost automatically over anything, and we're more likely to support our tribe, our group, even when it means that some people get treated unfairly. Like, think back to what the fans we spoke with said about their most hated rivals. Do you have kids? Yes. Sign the door, they know. They cheer for Alabama? They cheer for Alabama. If my son or daughter got a, a full ride scholarship to Auburn, I would pay first. <laughs> I would pay. I'd go in debt to pay. I would do everything I could to discourage them from going to Auburn. Because I would never wear those colors. How much do you dislike the Oklahoma Sooners? No, that's a negative. I've never met someone from Oklahoma that I like. I'm just going to be totally honest. Well, they're, they're there's, there, surely there's some good people. But I haven't met him yet. I haven't met him yet. <laughs> Even I, a super logical scientist who knows about this in-group, out-group stuff, can fall into the same trap. Like you guys know Dream, the streamer? Well, one day I saw Dream wearing an Oklahoma Sooners jersey, and my brain was like, nope, Dream bad. 
Is Dream actually bad? No, but my bias for my own group makes me think he is. And that brings up another psychological question. If fandom tends to divide us into us versus them, what benefit do we get from being a fan? Well, according to psychologists, humans have these two competing needs. We wanna be included in these groups, but we also wanna be seen as unique individuals. We can sort of graph this out. The vertical axis basically measures happiness. The other axis measures individuality versus assimilating into a group. For most of us, we'd be unhappy being totally on our own, but we'd also be unhappy giving up our individuality like sheep. So we look for our own sweet spot, which researchers call optimal distinctiveness. This sweet spot is different for different people. When we're at the right level of optimal distinctiveness for us, we're satisfying those two competing psychological needs at the same time, being accepted as part of a group and being recognized as special. Super fandom gives us an ideal way to hit that point. You can express your individuality and your unique fan experience while still belonging. You can be you while being included in this big group social experience. Of course, bad stuff can potentially come with being a super fan. For instance, we're more likely to excuse bad behavior when people are members of our group. But the good parts of fandom are huge. Like sports and other fandoms bring people from different cultures, backgrounds, social classes together to cheer for a team. What else in our world can do that? And look, I get it. It's uncomfortable to think about being a fan as our biological programming pushing us towards joining a group, but just because something's biological doesn't make it less meaningful. Think about it. Being in love is just a pattern of chemicals and nerves firing in your brain, but that doesn't take away from the specialness of it. I think this psychology of super fandom is an especially important thing to think about now when it feels like the us versus them mentality is everywhere, making the world a chaotic, scary place. Our mutual love of something can transcend our tribalism. It can lead to beautiful human moments where we reach across our differences to connect on a deeper level. And if by this point, you're thinking that maybe all of this doesn't just apply to sports, you're not wrong. So at the end of the day, my Longhorns won the game, just like I knew they would, because they're the best. Well, Joe is happy. I am not. We did it, baby. We did not do it. We've been there. I've been there. We're still friends. That was amazing. I love being a fan. But Destin and I are still friends. We spent the rest of the weekend hanging out, doing all sorts of friend stuff, like riding tractors. And even though Destin and I are big fans of our teams, we're even bigger fans of each other. Stay curious. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far, why don't you leave a comment telling me what you're a super fan of. And if you're a super fan of us, then one way to show that is to check out the link in the description to our Patreon page. You can support our show directly by joining our Patreon, which is a great way to help us help you because we get to make the videos that you love in just the way you like it. There's a link down in the description where you can learn more. And before you go, we have one more thing because if you're a super fan of us, maybe you're a super fan of PBS Digital Studios and all of the other shows in this great network. And it is time for our PBS Digital Studios annual survey. Every year we survey our audience, helping us understand what you enjoy on YouTube, what you would like to see us make more of. You get to vote on new show ideas. So it'd be great if Be Smart fans were well represented in this poll. There's a link down in the description. Thanks in advance. We'll see you next time. I'm ready. Let's make science. You probably know that I'm a fan of a sports team. My Longhorns won the game because they're the best.